Thank you so much. Welcome to Flutter Live. Thank you all for coming. This is a global event. We have hundreds of thousands of people watching this all over the world, whether via live stream or at the over 150 viewing parties around the world. Whether you're watching us over a morning cup of coffee in Seattle, or whether you're attending us a meeting after work in Berlin, or joining a pajama party in Bangkok, welcome. I want to start by paying credit to the many software engineers who contributed to this project, and without whom we wouldn't all be here today. With Flutter, we assembled the best engineering talent from across the industry, all of whom shared a dream of reinventing how user interfaces are built. Our team includes leaders with pedigree from web, desktop, and mobile UI toolkits. It includes the former editor of the HTML standard, leading developers who've worked on WebKit and Blink, and architects who created the first version of V8, the JavaScript engine that powers Chrome. And then beyond our own team, we also have hundreds of contributors from the community who've identified issues, contributed patches, and even introduced new features. And all of that has brought us to this moment today. This isn't just our product, but it's your product. And we're so proud to be part of the journey with you. So let's talk about Flutter. Our vision for Flutter is something that many of us have been dreaming of for years. A powerful, general purpose, open UI toolkit for building stunning experiences on any device, embedded, mobile, desktop, or beyond. While we're still in the early stages of this journey, we're already depending on Flutter ourselves at Google to power many different apps and services. We know from direct experience that it's ready for beautiful production apps. And now, we're delighted to share it with you also. Our immediate focus is the mobile phone. Developers today are forced to compromise between either building the same app multiple times on multiple operating systems or accepting a lowest common denominator solution that trades native speed and accuracy for portability. With Flutter, the days of compromise are finally over. There are four characteristics of Flutter that we think make it a unique platform for you to build native mobile application experiences. Firstly, Flutter enables you to build beautiful apps. As you'll hear later, Flutter provides a rich palette of tools that give you control over every pixel on the screen. Designers will never again have to compromise on their vision. Flutter includes a full set of widgets that deliver pixel-perfect experiences on both iOS and Android. And it enables the ultimate realization of material design. So whether you're building a highly tailored branded experience or a native iPhone or Android app, you should find that Flutter provides everything you need to build a beautiful, award-winning interface. Secondly, Flutter is fast. It's powered by the Blazing Speed Skier 2D graphics engine, which enables hardware accelerated graphics. From the start, we architected Flutter to be able to support glitch-free, jank-free graphics at the native speed of your display. Flutter code is compiled. It's not interpreted. It doesn't go through a virtual machine. When your application is finished, it's compiled to native machine code. Thirdly, Flutter is productive. Flutter introduces a revolutionary new capability for developers and designers to iterate on their apps in real time. And we call this stateful hot reload. And it enables you to change the code of your app and see the changes in real time without having to restart the app or get back to the screen you were on. And we think stateful hot reload transforms the way you build an app. And developers who use it, some of you may be here in the room today, say it makes them up to three times more productive. And lastly, Flutter is open. Flutter itself is open source, open for contributions, open for extensibility. 
Every line of code is available for you to read, fork, extend, amend. You don't have to buy a developer tool to use Flutter or to use its tools. Everything is licensed freely under a BSD-style license. And of course, that openness extends to the community. There are already thousands of Flutter plugins out there. And of course, anything that the underlying, open op the underlying operating system exposes is available to Flutter, whether it's written in Kotlin or Java on Android or Swift or Objective-C on iOS. So put all this together. Combine it with best-in-class tooling for Visual Studio Code or Android Studio, IntelliJ, or the programming editor of your choice. And you have Flutter, a framework for building beautiful native experiences for iOS or Android from a single code base. So what does this mean for you? Well, as a business, you no longer need to fund two teams. You can put all your resources towards crafting one beautiful native experience that's available everywhere you need to be. But today, we're not just here to talk about Flutter. We want to show you some examples of Flutter in action. And to do that, here's Philip Radzik. Over to you, Philip. Thank you. Thank you. So Tim told you about the four tenets of Flutter, beautiful, fast, productive, and open. And it was OK. Right? It was a little bit theoretical, but fortunately, I'm here now. And I'm going to show you how that translates to practical stuff. Uh, so we built an app uh, for this event. It's uh, called The History of Everything. And I'm going to give you a little tour of the app. And I'm going to show you uh, how you know, different things about Flutter made things possible or at least easier. So I'll start with the basics. The app starts immediately, right? This is because Flutter compiles ahead of time to ARM code, right? So there's no JIT to warm up. There are no scripts to parse. It just starts executing fast, right? Second, this is, um, uh, this is an Android device, and this is uh, an iPhone. And as you can see, you know, the basic interaction is completely natural. Uh, if you go to a different screen, you know, uh, everything works as you would expect. So these are the basics, and uh, this is how Flutter makes you productive uh, by letting you focus on the custom stuff while doing the, you know, the basics itself. I'm going to get rid of uh, one of the phones just because it's distracting to have two. And I'm just going to focus on this one, right? So let's take this a little further. It's nice to have scrolling, but you know, uh, how can we, you know, turn this up to 11? So in this view, we have this very interactive, very animated timeline, right? Where you can go from all the way from uh, Big Bang to today. And uh, uh, can, if you see that red dot, that's all of human history, by the way. Uh, we'll get back to that. But uh, what, what I'm going to show you now is actually, so the scroll behavior is still completely natural to the platform. But we added this really, I think it's fun, bouncy effect, just to make it more interesting to, to, you know, to interact with the app. And this is actually a testament to the openness of Flutter, because we were able to use Flutter physics, scroll physics, uh, and add a custom layer on top. So Flutter is not just open as in open source, as in you can read the code, of course, uh, but also it gives you, as a developer, access to all these classes and functionality that you can then build on top of. But let's take this a little further, right? So it's nice to scroll, but let's zoom. So I'm going to zoom right past dinosaurs, because it turns out nobody likes dinosaurs. Uh, humans. This is the red dot that we saw earlier. And now, as you can see, at any moment, at any scroll position, at any zoom level, we show what makes the most sense. 
And that is possible again because Flutter is fast. You can actually, or we can actually, recompute what to show on every frame. And this is basically a requirement for any very custom UI where you want to be able to rebuild things and be interactive 60 frames per second. OK, but let's take this a little bit further. So you might be thinking, oh, these are cool. Uh, I like these little animations. And you might also be thinking that these are actually you know, pre-computed, uh, a GIF or maybe a video. But these are actually vector animations that we're building on every frame with Flutter. So for example, this one, I can sway the tree above of Newton. And I like how like the apple still <laughs> falls on Newton's head. It's because, you know, life is hard. Um, and this is possible uh, because, again, Flutter is fast, but also because Flutter, at its deepest level, uses Skia rendering engine. Re uh, Skia is hardware accelerated. It paints directly to your graphics card, and you own all the pixels. So whatever beautiful design your designer designs, OK, <laughs> or whatever, whatever artwork your art person does, <laughs> um, you can do it, and you can do it again for 60 frames per second. And that's really cool. OK, now you might be thinking, uh, this is all cool, but uh, you're showing Pixel 3. That's a very modern phone. Uh, how about older phones, right? And I'm glad you asked, because by chance, I have um, other phones with me today. So this is, uh, this is an Android phone from 2014, Samsung. Um, and it's running, uh, I think, Android KitKat. And as you can see, it works just fine. And here, if I can make it go away, uh, and here we have an iPhone from 2013, so five years ago. And again, it runs just fine. Right? So it's not just the, the modern phones. OK, if we go to, uh, to the computer screen, um, what magic is this, right? I'm not going to do any live coding, but I just want you to see that it's just Flutter code. There's like all the app itself is all Flutter. There is no magic behind it. It's all the Flutter that you all probably, uh, or at least many of you know and laugh. Uh, so, so, you know, um, it just compiles to APK for Android and IPA to f for iOS, and um, then it, you know, it gets published to the stores. This is actually published like maybe two hours ago. This is uh, the App Store and this is the Play Store. If we get back to the phone. So yeah, so we were able in maybe something like 6,000 lines of code, we're able to build uh, a very custom app uh, in three months with three people who were busy doing other stuff as well. Uh, so that's the productive part, right? But there are things that you won't find in the released version of the app. Why? Because I believe that just because you can do something with Flutter doesn't mean you should. For example, can you add 150 little animated hearts to the timeline? Let's scroll with it and like, you know, get bigger and smaller and all that? Sure. Should you do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe yes, but no. Um, <laughs> second, uh, that we didn't add to the production app is the last event in the timeline. And that is obviously Flood Alive, right? Because the history of everything ends with Flood Alive. No, think about it. Like, everything that ever happened since the history of time has led us to this moment. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A little bit of yeah, philosophy. Anyway, what I wanted to show here is that, uh, you know, Flutter is all widgets. Uh, it's open and it's composable. 
So if we want to have a video playing in our very custom timeline and being included by all these things, we can, because it's just another widget. It's, it's, it's Flutter, so sure. The last thing I want to show you is basically this, but can we make it a, take it a little further? So uh, that's the blue dot just above here. And that is actually a very substantial event in the history of everything. This is me trying to find this venue earlier today. You know, I got lost in London, <laughs> and I was very sad. But I had a device with me uh, connected to the internet. And you know, there's this uh, service by Google that you use if you have a phone with you, and you're lost. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, in this little animation, wait, what is this? Can you see that? Uh, let me zoom in. Oh, is this an actual Google map running inside my Flutter application? <laughs> while it's being swayed around, <laughs> you know, sure. Because this is Flutter, right? So it's another widget. OK, so to summarize, uh, we've seen uh, an application that I think is beautiful uh, that was built in three months by three people uh, that is fast on a wide range of devices, and that, because of the openness of Flutter, can do cool things like this. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Philip. What do you think? <laughs> so to me, that's a great example of Flutter, right? It's a beautiful experience that uh, does things that even a traditional uh, native uh, platform solution might struggle to do. So you've seen a little of what Flutter can do. And today, <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to announce the general availability of Flutter 1.0. <laughs> Thank you. So today's release marks a key milestone for the product, where we declare it's not just ready for early adopters, it's ready for everyone. We released the first beta of Flutter back at Mobile World Congress in February of this year. Uh, and looking back over the last uh, nine months, it's been really quite humbling from our point of view to see how people have uh, adopted and responded to Flutter. Uh, since uh, February, well over a quarter of a million developers have used Flutter. Companies large and small, including the likes of Alibaba, Groupon, Tencent, Capital One, Philips Hue, and of course, Google are developing with Flutter. And even in this pre-release stage up till now, We've seen over 3,000 apps published on the Play Store alone, reaching hundreds of millions of users. To show you some of the momentum that already exists for Flutter, we thought it'd be fun to put together a quick video that shows the great work that many of you have done with Flutter so far. <laughs> 